Hey, it's John Fawcett. Most of you know me as the developer of Loop Follow that I've shown you here on screen, also of the AB switcher patch. I also run customtype1.com where we sell cases for the Emma links, Riley links, and Orange links. Um, I want to go through and give you guys a, some tutorials. Um, kind of on Mac, Xcode, Git, Terminal, etc. Not really to go super in depth, but to show Looper specifically some things that you may not know that will help make your life easier as you're building Loop um, and also make our lives easier as we're trying to help you build Loop. So um, the first thing I want to show you is actually uh, screenshots. We see when people posting for help, we see all the time um, blurry photos taken from the phone um, of another screen, and then you can't read it. It doesn't capture the entire thing. So the super simple method to take a screenshot, command shift three, all at the same time. So I'm just gonna go command shift three. You'll see the screenshot pop up in the bottom corner of your window. If you don't click it, it'll just show up as, a, as an icon on your desktop after a few seconds. If you click it, the handy thing is this gives you an editing window in here. So you can go in and say, this is the area that I need help with. Um, usually it turns those into arrows automatically. I wasn't quite fancy enough for it. Um, you can come in and add text. And then you can post that if you need to. Um, the key here is Command Shift 3. That takes your entire screen so that we see all of Xcode. Because what most people don't understand is usually the thing that you think is the error message is not actually the, the cause of the error. So we need, we're looking for the cause of the error. And sometimes that might be something way off in the corner that you don't think is important. So Command Shift 3, if you want to edit it, just click it when the icon's in the bottom of your screen, and then you can edit it and say done, and now it'll save this edited screenshot. If you don't wanna edit, and I'll just take another one, you can even get it quicker by using your trackpad to swipe it with two fingers, swipe it off to the right, and there you see it immediately pops up. Now, I know there are some people who have not been able to post their whole screen due to uh, confidentiality reasons of other things that might be on their screen, for instance, a work computer. If that is the case, and let me just open, um, let me open a folder here and show you how to do it for this. So imagine this is your Xcode window. Command Shift 4, you'll see my cursor turned into a little target, and you click drag and then let go at the other corner, and that will take a recording of that entire box that you dragged across. And so this screenshot is just that window. Now, if you do use that, make sure you get the entire Xcode window, the top, the bottom, everything about the Xcode window is what we're gonna need to see. Now, the next thing I wanna show you, and let me just delete these, right click and move to trash, is called Spotlight on a Mac. It's this little search icon on the top it's also command space. Since you're gonna be typing, as soon as you do it, I find command space is the easier method. So I just hit command space. And if I need to open terminal, I start typing T-E-R, it's gonna finish it. Um, so you don't even have to type in the whole thing. It's a lot faster than browsing through the applications folder and finding terminal through the applications folder. So that is Spotlight. The uh, next thing I want to show you is the downloads folder. Since most people download using the script now um, that automatically creates this build loop folder, and you can see um, I actually, Mark Oldham and myself wrote this script, and so I actually tweaked it to use it for my own apps as well at this point because of how nice it is in that it names your folders, the program, so in this case, loop follow the branch name, and then a date and time string. So 2020, December 25th at 6.49 in the morning. Why was I building Loop Follow on Christmas morning? I don't know, but that's when I downloaded it. Um, 
So one thing with this downloads folder, you'll see mine probably looks drastically different than yours when I just click on it. Yours probably does this. That's usually the default. Um, to change this, right click on the downloads icon and pick list. And the nice thing here with list is you can instantly go find the one you want just by clicking through and open the direct file that you want to open. Um, the vast majority of you at this point, um, now with iOS 13, are gonna be doing workspace builds. So the key is you need to be opening loop.xc workspace right here. So if you you do the script and it auto opens Xcode and you build and you're all fine, but then you come back and you wanna rebuild on another phone, you don't have to go through the script again. Just open up the downloads, find your last downloaded loop and click the XC workspace file. Now, the reason you wanna do it that way versus the other way, which would be to open Xcode first, and I'll show you. Let me just close Xcode. I'll open Xcode with Spotlight. Sometimes you're not always too sure exactly what you're opening here. You can see I can see the um, I can see the date in there, but unless I hover. I can't see the whole thing. So yours might say loop, 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 loop all the way down. And you're not exactly sure that you're opening the latest one you've downloaded. Now, some things in Finder. I will just uh, go open this folder in Finder. And if you want to open a folder rather than a file, you just click on the folder name instead. And that will open Finder to the folder name. So a few simple things, um, right click, clean up is a temporary uh, sorting, reordering. It's not gonna stay permanent. So for instance, if I drag my folder smaller, they're now off screen again. Um, sort is a permanent. So if you sort by name, then it's always gonna be permanent and they'll change as your window changes or you add or remove files. Um, if you need to rename a file, it's as simple as picking the file and hitting enter, and then you'll see you can get in to rename it. Now, obviously you're not gonna be renaming necessarily loop files, but um, if you're making customs like custom icons and need to rename those, things like that, if you do wanna come in and date folders differently or name the folders differently, just hit enter. Um, a lot of times when people are doing the switcher patch, um, they may need to have two windows open. So if you right click on a folder, you can say open in tab. So you can now have two tabs where you can drag the switcher patch and you can see it's right there from one tab to another. So if I just wanted to move that back into the top, I just drag it right there and it's in the top. If you wanna copy it, hold down the option key while you click and drag and that will copy it into that folder. Now let's move on and actually want to show you one more thing in Xcode. Uh, one thing that you may or may not know about is, so you see when I opened Xcode, the icon showed up, but when I close Xcode, the icon disappears. If you right click on any open icon under options, you can say keep in dock. So then even if the app is closed, it's still going to be in the dock and you can tell the apps that are open versus closed by the ones that have the little dot. So it's uh, the little dot essentially means it's minimized and no dot means it's not even running. So Xcode is not running, now it's running. And I'm gonna remove that from my dock so you can see it when I close it this time, it'll just disappear. Now the last thing is a program called Daisy Disk. Daisy Disk, uh, you can find the link down in the description. You can just Google Daisy Disk and you'll find it. Uh, I think the last time I looked when I bought it, it was maybe $10. It um, is well worth it for uh, how many times with a Mac, everybody seems to run out of hard drive space. <clears throat> so when you launch the program, I actually launched it and, and ran the scan ahead of time because it takes usually five to 10 minutes to run the hard drive scan. So I wanted to have that out of the way. You'll load it, there'll be one button that just says scan. <clears throat> 
And what this allows you to do is to dig down into your folders to see what is taking up so much of your hard drive space. So I'm now in the developer or library developer folder that has 100 gigs. Xcode has 90 gigs just in and of itself. So you've probably heard cleaning out derived data can free up space and also <clears throat> can, um, you know, call, fix some build errors. Well, from a space standpoint, that pales in comparison to this iOS device support. This folder actually is, um, <clears throat> when you plug in a device, it essentially downloads all the details it needs from that device to be able to run crash analytics on it. Um, and essentially, without getting into technical terms, um, it copies enough of the details that it knows so when you're testing on that device it can give you very important information um, as you're testing apps on it but you don't need to save these if you are never going to ever go back and build on these older uh, ios versions you can delete them and the nice thing about daisy disk is you can grab folders and drag them down into this lower collection area And it's going to show you how much space you've, get, how much space you're down to, uh, and how many gigs you're deleting, and then you can click delete. So that iOS device support folder is actually one where I would suggest deleting all, I, all iOS versions here. You'll see the version numbers that are older than what you're currently using. The reason I have 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, all so many of them is because every single one of those is for a different device. You really don't need them, but when you first plug in a new phone or a new a phone with a new iOS version, new Xcode version, you'll probably see some stuff about saying downloading device support files or um, updating the device to get it ready for uh, building, all those types of things. That's essentially where these files are coming from, is that process. So it'll repeat it and re-download what it needs if you delete something that was in here. So it might take you longer the next time you rebuild, but you can go ahead and delete them if you're short on space and need to update Xcode. So if you go into here also, you'll see there's really one file that's taking up the bulk of it and that's this cache file. And that actually should be able to be entirely deleted and it really won't affect you at all even the next time you update from Xcode or iOS. And you can see at the top, you can click back through the folder structures. Um, derive data. One thing about derive data is, so the script just blows the whole thing away. Derive data is essentially similar to that last thing in that this caches the files of the current build. Now you'll see I have a bunch in here that say loop. Well, the thing about this is, is that every time I download loop and build it, that specific download creates new derived data. So if we look at these in Finder and flip Finder over to the list, and sort by date modified, you'll see this loop-cbw, that's the one that I opened today. Um, the last time I built was a few weeks ago, it's AQF. All these other ones, if you look at it, they go back to like July. Um, so it's also possible that you can come in and free up device space while still maintaining a super fast rebuild process by deleting the older ones, but not the latest ones. So for instance, AVJ and EOB. Um, let me just find them. AVJ and EOB, which happens to be the biggest, and then delete those two. And we just freed up another, another few gigs of space on the hard drive. So those are the biggest things. You can also use this to go through your own uh, user folder, 
um, if you install apps that then you later delete, you're going to find the app data, data under containers and group containers. That's essentially like, like SugarMate Glance. If you delete SugarMate, it may not delete this folder. You can go ahead and delete that folder at a time in the future, and you're going to save 370 megs. Just don't delete anything that you don't know what it is, because um, you could run into a problem where you um, have deleted all the data needed for an app that you're using on your computer. So back to this top, this is what it looks like when you start, and you can just uh, wait for the scan to complete and then you'll get that window. Um, feel free to throw any questions down below. I'm going to be making some more of these. Um, terminal is one I'm going to be doing, some Xcode tips, some Git and GitHub tips, and then some Night Scout cleanup tips. Thanks for watching.